Before the Atalanta game, I said it was the biggest game in Solskjaer's career. I wasn't wrong. Manchester United were crap in the first half. Abysmal, 2-0 down, but we won 3-2 with an incredible comeback. And we now head into this game against Liverpool. And this is the biggest game of Solskjaer's career. We all know that it's going to be key to his future at the club. Will the performance be there? Will the result be there? I'm going to run through my predicted starting 11. And there really are so many questions here. Uh, Varane doesn't look like he's going to be fit. Will Maguire start? Will Fred start in midfield? What about Rashford on left wing? What about Cavani? So many questions. What about Pogba? There, there really are so many questions. So please watch this whole video. See my starting 11. The, the justifications for each position. I'm going to do my predicted 11 and my preferred 11 that I would prefer to see. But please subscribe to United People's TV if you're new because this one on the weekend, on Sunday, what a game ahead that we do have for Solskjaer. It's going to be... It's going to be nervy. And for me, before we even begin talking about the starting 11, I think we have to talk about the formation because I it strikes me as there's two options here. Number one is the 4-2-3-1. The one that Solskjaer has been sticking with basically his whole United career. But he does refer to the 5-3-2 sometimes in these games. Take you back to Spurs away when we played Pochettino at Wembley. We played with the split strikers. It, it kind of took Spurs by surprise. The ball over the top from Pogba to Rashford won nil winners that day. Tactically, Solskjaer threw a surprise on Pochettino and it worked. I wouldn't rule out him doing that on Sunday. It's not what my predicted 11 is going to be. I'm going to go for the 4-2-3-1. I think it would, would be a slight risk from Solskjaer to switch the tactics. And move away from the 4-2-3-1 that he trusts, even if the performances and the results haven't really been delivered with it. But that's I think it's going to be a 4-2-3-1. And I think this is going to be my back five. De Gea in goal, with Shaw at left back, Maguire and Lindelof as the two centre-backs, and Aaron Wan-Bissaka at right back. Now bear in mind this has been recorded before the, pr the press conference from Solskjaer. Maybe he's going to say that Maguire's fit... Or Varane, surprisingly fit. I don't think Varane will be risked in this game. He won't be. Not in his first game back after a couple of weeks out injured. What we need in this game, and this is crucial, we need Shaw and Wan-Bissaka to have fantastic games. We really do. Positionally, uh, Liverpool like to overload their, the flanks when they go down that side with Trent or Robertson, and they're really going to have a tough time. It means whoever's playing up front on the two wings as well, they're going to have to track back. There's going to have to be a lot of teamwork going on in this game from front to back, the, the the attackers have to defend. The defenders have to add to the attack as well. It's it's not as if a position in this team is you're just going to be staying left wing or you're just going to be staying left back. And Shaw and Wan-Bissaka are going to have tough games up against whether it's Jota, Salah, Firmino, Mane. Liverpool look good this season. Nobody can deny that. And Salah in particular looking very good. Shaw, bring your A game, buddy. You're going to need it. Now, I think Maguire will start at centre-back. And I think Lindelof will too. I don't think either of them played particularly well against uh, Atalanta. Maguire obviously was abysmal against Leicester. Solskjaer put his trust in his man defensively. I think there were still questions about Maguire, but he popped up with that goal. That goal that really was so important for United. Big moment for him. Maguire needs to stay headstrong in this game. Don't get caught out. Don't make too many mistakes. Remember that Liverpool are going to be pressing very high up the pitch. So United playing out from the back with a ball... It's not going to be fun to watch. That might mean that we try and knock it long a bit too often. And invariably, if we knock it long, Van Dijk's going to win every single header, depending on where we kick it anyway. So it's going to be tough for United to play out from the back. But that will be my back five. I don't think he'll risk Varane. I think, I think Maguire would still get the nod. But Shaw and Wan-Bissaka, for me, it's crucial that they operate properly. That they get towards the top of their game. I don't think either of them have this season overall. I thought... Wan-Bissaka actually was very good against Atalanta. I think he... Wan-Bissaka strikes me as a player who, when he plays well, no one really talks about it. And when he doesn't play well, everyone talks about it. It's a bit unfair on him, but Wan-Bissaka, man, you've got to be on point. Defensively, I'm never too worried about him, but we need him as an outlet going forward. Otherwise, we are going to get penned in our own box. Sure, and Wan-Bissaka have always got to make themselves available in space for Maguire and Lindelof if we're going to be able to beat the Liverpool press. But let's move into midfield where there are still so many questions. And before I do move on, a big shout out to OneFootball for sponsoring and supporting United People's TV throughout these last couple of months. You know by now that I do use the OneFootball app and I would recommend it. That's why it's such an easy integration to do. It's a fantastic app. All the latest Manchester United news, all the latest Manchester United news ahead of this game against Liverpool. 
all the quotes from Ole Gunnar Solskjaer in his press conference will all be on the One Football app. All the stats from the game as it's going on and the stats after the game. They'll all be available inside the One Football app. So I would encourage you to go over there, download the app. There is a link in the description. It's free to download and everyone loves the word free, right? And genuinely, if you haven't already got it, it's a fantastic app. I would encourage you to download it. But let's move on to midfield. And this really is where there are the most questions, obviously. Fred and McTominay came back in against Atalanta. Now, in the first half, we were abysmal. The whole game passed us by. Fred had a couple of chances, probably one of the biggest chances of the first half, actually. And I think overall in that game against Atalanta, Fred played pretty well. Second half, certainly. Energy was all there. And I think Fred went off with a slight injury. I mean, it looked like more like cramp a little bit. Uh, at the end of the game against Atalanta. So we'll probably get an update from Solskjaer bef- by the time this video is going out. So maybe Fred won't be available. And I, I'd be surprised if Fred didn't play, even if he was like 85, 90% fit. Fred's crucial. His energy is crucial simply because no one else has it. No one else operates in that sort of role. So while he does certainly have his limitations, look, Liverpool, when they had, you know, a couple of years ago, Henderson is a far better footballer overall, I would probably say, than Fred is. But Henderson is not a sexy name. Uh, of, of Milner, there's players inside that team who just just have the work rate. The work rate is so important in football. And while it's not the most important, it's obviously the quality and the talent of the player. If you don't have that effort and attitude to match it, your talent just won't be maximised. And Manchester United, inside that midfield setup that we've got, Fred is the only player who really operates in that style. It's why, he, for me, he's probably the first name on the team sheet here against Liverpool. We need that energy because Liverpool are going to come and come fast at Old Trafford. If we try and play slow, we're going to lose badly. So Fred's in there. Now, his partner is the biggest question, I would argue. Is it going to be McTominay? Is it going to be Matic? Or is it going to be Pogba? I'm going for Pogba. And I think I might be wrong here. I think it probably will be McTominay. But this is where we can see whether Solskjaer wants to take the risk or not. McTominay might be considered a safer pair of hands, but I would argue McTominay's performances in the last couple of games have sort of passed him by. Maybe in this game against Liverpool, with so much riding on it, Solskjaer will revert to the safety net that McTominay gives rather than Paul Pogba. But if Paul Pogba plays here, and he plays like he can play, and he has played there for France, he can be so much better in that role in linking that midfield to the attack and getting it to Bruno in the right position. And obviously Bruno's in my starting eleven. I'll go on to the front four next. But... Paul Pogba in that role, he needs to put a proper shift in against Liverpool if he's going to play there. He can't simply let the game pass him by. I need to see energy from him in the same way that I need to see Wan-Bissaka and Shaw going forward, helping the attack, giving the width, but also defensively covering all positions. I need Paul Pogba in midfield to be making himself available for Fred in possession and out of possession to be hassling Liverpool's midfield. Don't just let the game just pass him by and just watch it. It can't happen. And if it does happen, it's going to hurt United. And that's why Solskjaer reverts to McTominay so often instead of Paul Pogba. Even though Paul Pogba should be in our starting eleven every single week, we still can't find that balance. So for me, I'm starting Pogba alongside Fred. You let me know what you think about that midfield. There's obviously question marks about it, but there'll be just as many question marks about Fred and McTominay too. Now for my front four, again, there's no, there's no set... De Gea is definitely set in his position, but our defence, there could be a change or two. Depends if Maguire's fit, depends if Aram's fit in midfield. It depends who Solskjaer wants to play. And the same can be said for our front four. My front four, I'm going for Bruno in the number 10 role with Rashford on the left, Greenwood on the right, and Ronaldo up front. I'll explain each position. I said in a little short video I did on Facebook and Twitter this week, look, Bruno was magnificent, absolutely magnificent against Atalanta. But what I need to see from Bruno Fernandes is him not leaving that number 10 role positionally too often against Atalanta he drifted we went to a 4-2-4 no link between midfield and attack Fred and McTominay they had the ball but they had no outlet the only way they could go was backwards we do that against Liverpool we're just going to get penned in and lose the ball or kick it long or kick it out won't help us Bruno needs to be the player who makes himself available in that center circle is the outlet for Fred and for McTominay centrally and maybe they can have outlets from Wan-Bissaka and Shaw as long as they're playing as proper fullbacks against Liverpool and going forward and making space. But Bruno, he got too excited too often, I believe, against uh, against Atalanta. Obviously, he was man of the match. He got two assists. I'm not saying that he played badly because he did not play badly. But I'm saying overall for the strength of the team, and especially against Liverpool and the press that we're going to be under, 
We need Bruno as an outlet. So he's got to hang around that, cent that centre circle, really, and then make himself available to get the balls out to Rashford or Greenwood or Ronaldo. Now, Rashford, for me, I think he'll start. Obviously, we'll get confirmation about whether he's going to be in this team or not. And if he's not completely fit to start, then maybe we can probably expect McTominay to come in midfield and Pogba to play out there on the left. But I hope Rashford is fit. Rashford loves scoring against Liverpool and Rashford loves the big games. And we need him to set the tempo in this game. I keep saying, uh, Rashford's so important to this Manchester United team. And a goal against Leicester and a goal on his first start against Atalanta. Two goals in 90 minutes from Rashford on his return after four months out. It goes to show how good a player he is. We need Rashford in this team and we need Rashford setting the pace up front because it's going to be a hard game, man. And chances are going to be far and few between. And if we can play properly, and with, uh, you can say that about every single time United play, right? But Rashford on the left wing as an outlet with the partnership with Shaw going forward, it could be good for United. It should be good for United. We need to use that and maximise that as much as possible because Liverpool will come at us, man. There will be spaces in behind Trent who kind of tucks into midfield quite a lot. If we can get the balls over the top accurately to Rashford, he'll find space, man. He'll find space alongside Van Dijk. Um, and then we've got Greenwood on the right-hand side. Would you start there? Would you start Sancho instead? I think he'll start Mason. Uh, that's just my opinion. You might disagree with that. Fair enough. You let me know why in the comments below. But I think, yeah, I don't know, I, I just, I get the feeling that Mason will start. Jaden is somebody who right now to this day has struggled so far at Manchester United. I think partly that's down to his own performances, partly that's down to Manchester United and him being symptomatic of the, of the lack of cohesion we've got in this, in this team, really. We need to play with pace, really, to get the most out of Jaden Sancho. I've said that from the start, I maintain it. And I don't think we have been doing that enough. I'd love to see Sancho, I would not be upset in any way, shape or form if Sancho starts. But I'm going to go for Greenwood. And obviously, I'm going Ronaldo up front, which obviously begs the question about Cavani. Should Cavani start out on that right wing instead of Greenwood, for example? Maybe that would add a little bit more balance. And hell, look, again, I would not be upset about this. This is my predicted 11, not my preferred 11. But I do think he'll start Green Greenwood or Greenwood, Sancho or Cavani is probably the biggest question mark. And given how Cavani plays and given that we're playing Liverpool... Maybe you will see Cavani there on the right wing. And Ronaldo, of course, Ronaldo's going to start. These are the games we bought him back for, other than the Champions League. Ronaldo's, what we saw against Atalanta, and I've said it all along, man. Get Ronaldo the chances. Get the balls into the box to him. No one's going to, well, Van Dijk is going to have a tough, uh, tough game against him, but Ronaldo's just incredible in the air. There, there aren't many better than him and his vertical jump. Give Ronaldo opportunities, he will score. Don't expect him to press. But even that saying that against Atalanta, Ronaldo was incessant. His running across the whole pitch was fantastic. He really set the tempo. He did not want to go into the Europa League, I tell you that. So Ronaldo, I'm starting him up front there. So that's my team that I think Solskjaer will start. De Gea at the back was Shaw, Maguire, Lindelof, and Wan Bissaka as the back five. Fred and Pogba in midfield with Rashford on the left, Bruno in the middle, Greenwood on the right, and Ronaldo up front. If you're looking at my preferred 11, I'd keep it pretty much the same, but I would put Cavani in on, on the right wing. Greenwood, as, uh, as good as he is as an outlet, I think what we need more against Liverpool is energy. And I, it's, it, it, almost sound, it, it sounds basic to say such a thing, but it's not as if Cavani is a bad footballer. Of course, he brings quality and, and style as well, but just the actual the, the aggression of Cavani is something that we need in this game. And he offers it so much more than Mason Greenwood does. Who's, Mason Greenwood's a slight footballer, lowest centre of gravity, very good at dribbling and passing players. But Cavani is just someone who's going to come in, tie his hair back, whip his elbows out. And that's what we need in this game. It's going to be fiery. It's going to be heated. It's going to be hostile. Luckily, it's at Old Trafford instead of Anfield. But for me, that's my preferred eleven. I'd stick with the 4 2 3 one. But again, as I said, I would not be surprised at a 5-3-2 if Solskjaer pulled it out. It won't be a surprise. It's just I think on the on the scale, you know, balancing it all out, I think he'll stick to the 4-2-3-1. And it, in my opinion, I think he should be starting Cavani on that right wing. And then having Mason or Sancho coming on towards the end of the game, depending on what sort of game it is. But look, there are so many questions in defence, midfield and attack for this game against Liverpool and in formation. There are so many questions. I want you to let me know in the comments what you think. But... Uh, this game's huge, man. This game is huge. Every single game now is huge, but this one in particular against against our bitter rivals at Old Trafford. As I said before, it was against it was when we got pumped 
by Liverpool Old Trafford under Moyes that I lost faith in Moyes. It was when we got beaten away at Anfield under Mourinho that I lost faith in Mourinho. Solskjaer faces a similar situation on Sunday and he has to make sure that this team wins. I think that's who he's going to start that 4-2-3-1 there. You let me know what you think in the comments below. But, but prepare yourself because Sunday is not going to be good fun to watch. I tell ye that.